Thank you for tuning in to our going from this place. For God is good and he is worthy to be praised. I'm thankful to him for his graciousness and his kindness. And we are just so thankful that we have another opportunity to be able to be able to share dialogue. When we want to grow from this place, that's any place that we're in, no matter what has happened, what has trans regardless of what has transpired, we're grateful to God because we can come back, we can come through, we can come over any situation in, through, and around our life with the help of God. It's orchestrated simply knowing this, that no matter what God has allowed in our life, no matter what challenges and circumstances we've had to face, even dealing with the unknowns, there's one thing for sure that we know that we can count on, and that is this. As long as we have God, we can grow from that place, we can soar from that place, and we can have victory from that place. And with that being said, welcome to this call tonight, Corn, from this place. And I'm thankful unto God for this opportunity. I'm going to start out with a word of prayer. We're definitely going to move forward, and we're going to conclude with a series that we've been talking about for quite a few weeks now, Focus to Keep Favor. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy, your kindness, your grace towards us. There's nobody like you in all the earth. We love you, Jesus, and we adore your holy name. We're thankful unto you for you have given us another day another opportunity of life. And we thank you, God. You're so awesome and precious. We reverence your holy name, and we thank you tonight. We pray that you release revelation and insight. Teach us so we can be better for you. Teach us so we can be better in you. We pray that an anointing is released over this call tonight, where you're able to bless people's lives. Give us direction. Give us protection for our purpose and our destiny, as well as our families. Thank you that because of you, we can grow and we can become better in the kingdom of God. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to get into our studies tonight, our lesson. Uh, We definitely want to be able to close out Focus to Keep Favor. We've been talking about the importance of not being distracted, the importance of being able to accomplish goals to be able to stay focused on the task, on the journey at hand. We've admitted that there have been times that we all have had to go through situations that perhaps um, something threw us off or maybe we lost our focus or maybe we lost our microscopic attention, if I can say it that way, and be able to understand that sometimes life will take you through changes, but we understand this, that oftentimes broken focus is broken dreams. Broken focus is broken momentum, and it's hard for things in order to be to be accomplished in life if we are scattered in our thoughts. James said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, which means we can't get that traction. We can't get that footage that we need in order to be what God wants us to be and to accomplish the goals. I want you to already look at this year already how much time. We're dead center in the middle right now. I want you to look back and go back to the end of December uh, and now to the beginning of January. Now we're in the month of June. And the question now becomes, what have I set my mind to do that I have accomplished and I followed through. What did I start that I finished? And then the other part of the question is, is how many things have I started and they're yet to be finished because I lost my focus, because I became distracted, because I got into my emotions, I got into my feelings, or I let other things pull me from being self-centered to complete the task. When we say the word focus, we understand that it's a level of light that we become and be able to tap into the ability to see clearly. When you're focused, that means you're paying attention. It means to be concentrated. You concentrate on what's going on. And it also is an element of devotion. It's when you've been sharpened. It's when you've been centered. It means sometimes to be focused. It means you have to make adjustments. You have to make adjustments, and you have to 
uh, put forth effort to pay attention to time and particularly set your goal to an aim that's very clear and a definite purpose. And Proverbs 4 and 25 says, let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. In other words, we got to be able to accomplish the things that need to be accomplished and do what needs to be done. Uh, so many times people are so focused on other things, things that uh, accomplishments, we, we sometimes we overly extend basking on past accomplishments. So I believe that we're to honor, we're to celebrate. But if you're not careful, your past accomplishments and or past failures can become an enemy against your future. I really believe that this year is the year to look forward, no matter where you are in life, to be able to understand that when we have life, we have the ability to be able to focus, to move forward, to do what needs to be done. And I want to be able to accomplish this goal and close this out properly from a perspective that you can do things um, better and greater. There's something I want to read to you starting out. And I want to go to the book of Philippians. And Philippians, I think, is chapter 3. I want to get into this text. And then I'm going to our conclusional uh, story uh, that we're going to do. Philippians 3 and 12 says, Not as though I have already obtained, I the word already perfect. I love that part of the scripture. In other words, there's things that I still need to do. There's still things that I still and we still need to accomplish. Um, we're not already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend or grab a hold to that for which I also am apprehended of Christ. In other words, I want to grab a hold to those goals as Christ has grabbed hold to me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. There's still work to do. We're not perfect. We're striving to be better. But this one thing I do, we're getting those things which are behind. I want to go back to the language by which Paul used. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things with a nest which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. What that tells me is there's one thing that we need to do in order to keep our focus. We cannot, we cannot um, keep allowing the things that have already happened, the things the good things, the not-so-good things, the good choices, the not-so-good choices, situations, and the not-so-good situations, our highs and also our lows, and even the in-betweens. We got to understand this one thing we have to do, forgetting those things, the diversity of things which are behind and reaching forth to those things, in other words, more than one thing that we're striving for which are before, I press. I press. Look at the things we have to do when he says I. This one thing I do. In other words, I can't blame others. This is something that I have to do. I got to forget those things which are behind me. In other words, I cannot become part or pause too long on what has already happened or what I cannot change. I got to forget those things which are behind. And what I got to do is I got to reach for those things which are before. I got to understand my past and my future are two different places. I got to understand what I do in my past many times can affect my future. But one thing that I have to do is I cannot allow past triumphs and past mistakes to rule my life and or people who have been a part of both 
and wants to cause you not to think that there's more ahead of you than there is behind you. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I believe that it is crucial. I believe that it is essential to have people in your life that push you to press. I didn't say pressure you to press. I said push you to press. Accountable to your goals, accountable to your dreams, accountable to your spirituality, accountable to the natural things that you want to accomplish, accountable to build legacy, accountable to build a future. You know, I think one of the great mistakes that people make in life is they tend to measure themselves many times by the accomplishments of others who are not in the race. You should always have someone that uh, you look up to that challenges you to go further. You should also be able to remember where you come from to help better other people's lives if you can. You should also understand that all glory goes to God. Never forget why you do what you do and who you do it for. You got to understand that in order to be successful in life, and I'm trying to bring some encouragement because I'm getting ready to deal with a story of in the middle of pressing, someone had to remain focused. And I'm going to deal with what can happen if you remain focused and what can happen if you become distracted, but you still can win. So many of us in this, you know, world today, things are changing so fast. I never thought uh, ever before have I gone, and, and it happened to me today, went to the gas station, and I never thought I'll see the day to where for regular gas I will pay $4.90 a gallon. Did that today. But I could not allow the price of gas to stop me from pushing through this day. Right now, there's so much going on in our news. And the news that's being reported, the things that people are trying to get us to be consumed with are things of the past. Breaking news. Sometimes they call it breaking news when they already knew the news was in a position to where if you're not careful, it can affect your future. We're in a very crucial time, and there are so many distractions out there through the media, through the news. There's distractions uh, on news networks. The, the, the news networks are really trying to create a, a storyline in such a way so the storyline can become the attention of the day, and they literally hire people to be able to tag things to make it the news of the day. When the truth of the matter, if you really want to know the truth, many times the news of the day is simply to capture our minds. And make it so to where the bottom line is, is the more people that they can attract to whatever the storyline is, your attention is creating wealth for them. Because the truth of the matter is, the more people they can get to pay attention to them, the more that they can charge or more money they can make because they have the attention of whomever, for whatever reason, not really trying to give us the news for us to be better in many cases, but simply creating our attention so they can direct us and make us think about what is important to them 
understanding that in many cases the bottom line is the better story can sell. We, we can see it with the reality shows. We can see it with so many things. If people can get you to engage with what is happening in their life, it is just amazing. And many times they will create drama. They will create a, a storyline. The juicy it is, the raunchy it is, the, the tr- more trifling it is, the more it sells. And they're creating things to get you to focus for their agenda. And the travesty is you can get consumed so much until you don't even look at your own life. You can, you can get so consumed on social media. You can get so consumed on reality shows. You can get so consumed with breaking news. You can get so consumed with TikTok. You can get so consumed with Instagram. You can get so consumed with Twitter. You can get so consumed with Facebook and any other platform. You can get so consumed until you can go days without focusing on what we need to do to make our lives better and our families better and our walk with God better. You can become so consumed with what your friends and what your relatives and what other people are doing so you won't have to pay attention to the fact that maybe you're not doing what you should be doing or you're not growing the way you should be growing. Why are your goals and dreams and your purpose and destiny in God taking a back seat to Fox, to CNN, to NBC, to ABC, to CBS, to BET, from BBC. Why Why are your dreams, why is your family, why is your life, why is your walk with God taking a back seat to influencers and people who are, are making comments and making opinions so you can focus on them And the only thing they want is your attention. And you can't even call them on the phone. You can't even talk to them. You can't even get to them. Why is and why are your dreams and goals taking a back seat to the betterment of who you are and who you can become? Because you've lost your focus. If we can seek the will and purpose of God like we seek to keep up with other people's life who we don't even know, we'll be a better people. Let me get to my text. I'm ready. And I'm going to close out quickly. I want you all to give me four extra minutes tonight. You know, usually I try to let you guys off within 30 minutes, but I'm going to need 34 minutes tonight because i got to tell the story. i got to tell the story about a story we already know story we've heard. Matter of fact, one of the most profound beginnings in the Bible. And I want to talk about the power of focus. And then I want to talk about in the same story, the power of distraction. Let me go to Matthew, the 14th chapter, and I'm going to start reading from verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. This was right after Jesus had fed the 5,000 in the desert, in the wilderness. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. This is Jesus. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Jesus took some time, some one-on-one time with him and God and in prayer. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Jesus is not in the boat. The disciples in the boat, he told them, let's go to the other side. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them, went unto them walking on the sea. Jesus is doing something that had never been done. Jesus is doing something 
in the midst of uh, waves, in, in the midst of contrary winds, Jesus is taking a walk on the sea. He's focused. He had just got out of prayer. The only miracle that's in all four Gospels is feeding of the 5,000. Everybody wrote about it. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. When they saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They in the boat, even though the wind is contrary. But they're surely not doing what Jesus was doing. Jesus is doing something that had never been done. They were saying it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. That's when you know that I talked about it this morning on our 6 a.m. prayer call about what fear does to us. Fear will cancel your faith. They're enemies. They cried out for fear because they are seeing something that had never been done. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. Why can I say it like I want to say it? Why are you tripping? Change your attitude. Why are you afraid? You don't even recognize me. You don't even recognize that I am so focused until I'm walking on the water towards you. I'm walking through this storm. I'm walking through this contrary wind. I'm letting you know, and I'm trying to get you to focus on the example that is in front of you rather than be afraid of what's going on around you. You see me. It's me, but you don't recognize me. Because you don't see right when fear is in your life. You're not focused. You're not focused on who is in front of you. You're not focused on who is coming towards you. You're not even paying attention until I'm breaking the laws of gravity. I'm breaking the laws of natural ability. You're not supposed to be able to walk on the water. You're supposed to sink. You're supposed to drown. And especially on a day of adversity, especially when the winds are contrary. We live in Florida. I live in Florida. And, and, and you know, when the winds get heavy, I'm telling you something, you can, you can hear it. You can see it. We understand hurricanes. We understand tornadoes and thunderstorms. We understand that the wind and the rain can be very uh, threatening. We've lost, people have lost their lives in weather conditions in Florida. But Jesus is doing something that had never been done. He's focused. He just showed favor by feeding the 5,000 with the boys' lunch, two fish, five loaves of bread. So he just showed favor. Now he sends them away. He said, let us go to the other side. They didn't hear him correctly because he didn't say, you get in the boat and go to the other side. He said, let us go to the other side. In other words, I'm not going to let you go through this by yourself, but I'm going to set an example. Jesus spake unto them, say, be of good cheer. Be reminded that I'm teaching about focus to keep favor. Be not afraid. He said, look now, you can't let fear overtake your life. I know I'm doing something you've never seen before, but I'm setting the example. If I can do something that had never been done before and I become Lord over your life, you can do the same. You can do something that you've never done before if you stay focused, if you don't become distracted, if you keep your eyes on me, if you keep your spirit and your focus on what I tell you to do, if you stay in your lane with faith, you can do something or you can have something or you can become something that has never happened in your life. It's 12 disciples in the boat. And Peter, one of them, answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou Bid me come unto thee on the water. If it's you, let me do what you are doing. Peter tests Jesus. He puts himself in the position 
that if you can do it, I can do it too. If it's really you, then I'll be able to do what you're doing. Peter answered and said, verse 28, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. How many things that has happened in your life to where you're afraid to get out of your comfort zone because you've never done it or, or you're afraid to try it. I'm not talking about daring, dangerous things that jeopardizes your life or your safety. I'm talking about things that faith requires. I'm talking about things that God will approve. Notice now, Jesus said, watch this, in verse 29, and he said, come. In other words, you have the go-ahead. If you can keep the faith and the focus, I challenge you to come. Because see, the people around you, they're just going to sit in the boat. They already got fear on them. Why do we allow boat talkers? Why do we allow fearful people who are not trying anything or not attempting anything? There are many things that I've tried in my life um, and believe God for that perhaps didn't work out quite the way you wanted them to, but there's no such thing to me because we got to understand the lesson in many cases that God wants us to learn or the trial or the test or the challenge. Sometimes the greatest defeat is no attempt at all. You talk yourself out of the business before you even open it or before you believe that you can do it. You come up with a list of what happens if a boat talker watches me. Let me tell you something right now. These boat talkers who are not, they always got a comment, but they don't have commitment. You know, I, that's one of the reasons why, you know, you know, you'll let a few people, those of you all who engage in social media, a few people might not like, you know, they might have some shade towards your, your, what you're attempting to do, and then now you don't want to try anything, or you find out, who wasn't successful in it, or you, you know, everybody don't have the same level of faith. Just because you have titles. Notice now, all of these people in the boat just saw Jesus take two fish and five loaves of bread and sat 5,000 men and fed 5,000 men. And the next part of the text, they didn't even have the ability to transfer their focus to faith. You don't allow doubters. You don't, I don't let people who don't believe run my belief system. And surely, surely, people who don't trust the word of God, oh, no, no. We have been, I'm just going to say it so strongly and rightly, we have been deceived and lied to so much in the media, even when it came to things would come to, even in this pandemic, people who are acting like experts don't know, as we say in the country, jack about what they talk, what they're talking about. Why is it? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to need one more minute. I'm going to need five minutes. Why is it that? You allow people to break your focus in some things you haven't even tried. Boat talkers. Jesus said, come. And Peter was come down out the ship. See, he was good. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. When he was focused, when he obeyed God, when he obeyed the instruction of God, of Jesus, he was able to do something that no man had ever done before. It was never known for a man to walk on water. It was new, known for Moses to walk through the water after God had departed the Red Sea. But to literally walk on water, to literally walk on water, notice something else. 
It never said in the scriptorial text that the storm had ceased or the wind had stopped blowing. We don't find out what happens. Peter had so much faith initially while he was focused that he was able to do the same thing that Jesus was doing. He was able to walk on water. He said, come. And when Peter was come down out the ship, he left the negative people. He left the boat talkers. He started walking on the water to go to Jesus. But when, verse 30, but when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink. Here it is, the same man who was focused was doing something that had never been done. No man had ever done and doing the same thing because he had an approval from God to step out and keep your focus and come to me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your faith on me. Keep your focus on me. And you can do something that has never been done in your life and for your family. And for God to get the glory, you can do something that you've never seen anyone else do. If you keep your focus. Sometimes your focus in God when you're walking in Christ and doing what God wants you to do. You got to have an eagle eye. You got to be zeroed in. You got to have microscopic faith. You can't look at the wind. You can't listen at the sound of the wind. The Bible says when he saw the wind. Not when he saw Jesus, when he saw the wind, he was afraid. It began to sink in his mind that I'm doing something that had never been done. He became afraid. Failure was talking and probably boat talkers behind it. I hope he sinks. Well, he think oh, he always think he needs something. Paying attention to folk that ain't doing nothing. Now, y'all need to understand about something about John McKnight. I... Um, I'm going to say it with two, two N's, three O's, and five T's. I am not, yes, I said not, going to let boat talkers and people who wouldn't take adv advantage of the opportunity. You got a chance when God approves something in your life to step out in faith. You have to make sure of this, that you know it's God and that you keep your focus, especially when you have the approval to walk out and do what God wants you to do. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, beginning to sink. He got out of his focus. He became distracted. And then he began to sink. Well, focus is important. But he was smart enough. He cried saying, Lord, save me. He got his focus back. I, I, I'm sinking now because I took my eyes off you. But he got his focus back. I'm telling you tonight, your life and your purpose might appear like it's been on pause. The wind has been boisterous. And you was doing good for a minute. But because you took your eyes off God, because you start looking at too many other people, because you now trying to document who else failed. Or perhaps you can lose your focus on whoever you might think is successful. You around here promoting other people's success. I remember there was a time I was in the company and people used to, they love to do lifestyle videos, love to do lifestyle videos. I said, why are you, why are you, why are you showing everybody else lifestyle? Make your own video. In other words, your success, if you press towards the mark, the prize, if you understand that if I'm doing this to give God glory, I'm doing this so others can believe, I'm doing this not for the boat talkers. I'm doing this for the water walkers. I don't have a monopoly. 
on what God can do. If he did it for you, he can do it for me. If he did it for someone else, he can do it for you. But Peter was doing something that had never been done. It's about time you do some things in your family to make other people want to get out the boat and walk on the water or accomplish something for God's glory. You have to make sure you keep your mind focused on God. You can do it. You can become it. You can be it. But you got to keep your focus. Because if you keep your focus, you will keep your favor. Many times people do not run into favor because they did not pass the test of keeping their focus. And if you lose your focus, you can jeopardize and lose your favor because fear kicks in. And you know, you see, you're expecting no favor when you're being ruled by fear. Let me close this out. But when he saw the wind bolsters, he was afraid, began to sink, lost his focus, distracted. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And this gracious God, this gracious Christ that we serve, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the wind, in the middle of someone who lost their focus, the Bible says, and immediately, verse 31, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. In other words, he was seeking. He, he was going under. That lets me know, even if your life has been headed in the wrong direction, if you get your focus back and cry out to God, he has the power to save you from drowning. Some of you might feel like you're drowning already. But here's the remedy. Get your focus back and say, Lord, save me. Or get your focus back and say, Lord, help me. Get your focus back and say, Lord, forgive me. Get your focus back and say, I'm going back to what I know that will allow me to be successful. And Jesus immediately stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, watch this. This is a key thing that I want you to remember. O thou of little faith. In other words, he didn't say of no faith. The boat talkers didn't have no faith. They never attempted. They never tried. He said, wherefore did thou doubt? Peter, you had the faith to do it. You lost your focus. Why did you doubt? You were doing something that had never been done. Let's keep our focus so we can keep our favor. And when they were come into the ship, Jesus just called him. But you're going to have to walk back, Peter. You're going to have to do what I do. What it tells me is, is as long as you stay focused on the commandment of God, as long as you stay focused, you can do something that has never been done. When I was thinking about uh, the, asking the Lord how to close this out, he said, tell them that they stay focused. They can accomplish things and do things in life that they've never done before. They can see things transpire that they've never seen before. Forget the boat talkers. And be a water walker. Because we have instructions from God that if you keep your focus, if I tell you to come on this water, if I tell you to walk on this water, I have the power to not only allow you to do something that has never been done, but I also have the power to save you when something's trying to drown you. They walk back. And the Bible says that when the disciples saw the wind cease, the wind became depleted when faith is totally walking in focus. You can do it. You can be it. You can become it. And you can do something that has never been done, especially when the Lord says to come and to do it. Jesus, when he said, come, Telling Peter, you can do it if you stay focused. Father, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, your grace, your kindness. We thank you for your love. You're an amazing God, and you do amazing things. We bind every distraction. We bind every spirit of adversity. We thank you, God, for being and giving more than enough. You're good, you're God, and you're worthy to be praised. And we thank you. 
we thank you and we praise your holy name that the worst is over and the best is yet to come. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings we will not have room to receive. We thank you tonight that what the enemy meant for evil, you'll turn for our good. We thank you that we'll remain focused. We thank you that we will do things that have never been done by us. We thank you that we are covered by your blood. Heal our hearts and our minds. There are many families who are suffering from grief and loss. I pray, God, in Jesus' name that you will cover, that you will protect, that you will give us favor, that we'll stay focused. Thank you that we have the power and we have the mindset to bring you all glory and all honor. It belongs to you. We thank you, God, that we're about to do things that have never been done. We praise your holy name that it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.